Hello you lovely lot and welcome to a new video. My name is Katie and I'm going to show you a few things I've been picking up recently. As you'll notice my first purchase is from Jackson's and I picked up three colours of the Shinhan Pass acrylic watercolour hybrid. I picked up white, black and indigo. And I did need those for a very good video coming up soon. The items on screen now are what I picked up whilst I was on holiday in Madeira. The first paints are some Arctic's gouache. I guess they're very similar to the Himi and I suppose it's a different format to the jelly paints but I was curious enough to see. I also found the most adorable art shop in Madeira and they sold these Giotto gouache paints as well as the pelican ones and again just curiosity they were really cheap. I also picked up a Canson XL mixed media sketchbook and that's the same paper which was featured in the scroller box but I had no idea at the time. And my final little haul, yes the whole part of this video is pretty quick and that's because I prefer to just feature them in the videos on a piece I want to do rather than just using them for the sake of. But anyway, I decided to pick up some soft watercolour brushes and they are those interesting wire bound ones. I think we had one in Upcrate years ago perhaps or maybe last year and I just wanted to try some more. I also picked up some other watercolour brushes but I'm gonna guess they're more of a mixed media brushes because they looked a lot like the Artful ones and I was a little curious. You'll see I picked up a concertina watercolour paper book and I want to get into those a little bit more. I know I got a couple more from Upcrate Art Calendar but I, I want to I want to try a few. And finally, I picked up some watercolour pencil paper and I was super, super curious about this. I'll go into how much everything costs a little later in the video, but I wanted to get cracking on using these supplies right here. To begin with, I just picked out some cheap watercolour pencils. They are the Marabou ones and I've had them for ages. I got them from Lidl and they were less than £5. I probably assume they still are. And the other ones I'm using are the Simply De La Roni ones. And it was literally just a quick swatch out just to see really if it was any different to regular watercolour paper. Now, I'll be honest with you, it's not a medium I use very often. I certainly don't feature it all that often on this channel, but I do find it quite a intriguing medium, let's say. For me, my first experience of watercolours were in the very late 90s and I'll be honest, they were not great. Young teenage me at the time was struggling to get fine details with just watercolours alone and I thought watercolour pencils would be a great solution to that. However, back then, I don't know if they were a relatively new thing, I guess they weren't, they've probably been out for a while, but the ones I could afford with my pocket money weren't quite up to scratch, I just found they didn't dissolve very well and didn't really give me those fine details which I could just achieve with a little bit of practice anyway. So the Shinhan Pass Watercolour Acrylic Gouache Paint, they were 380 for the white, 530 for the black, 420 for the indigo and that's in pounds. They're not cheap but again thankfully I was very kindly sent some and I just picked up a few extra just to supplement that little colour library so I could paint a beautiful dragon with them. The Arctic gouache I picked up was €5.95 and I got that from I guess a bit of a department store and it was called Bazaar do Povo, I'm probably completely butchering that and again referring back to the Himi gouache I thought it might be nice to have something similar to compare them to, I'm pretty sure Himi and gouache and Arctic sorry are the same and they just rebranded it for the West who knows but that's my little verdict there and it'd be quite interesting to see if the two paints that I've picked up perform in a similar way and there are 12 12 milliliter tubes in there the pelican gouache was six euro ninety and you get five ten milliliter tubes and please be aware I will go into depth in these videos I'll do separate gouache videos because you know if you're a bit of a long time viewer you'll have seen I've got quite a few on there now 
The Giotto, I can't think for the life of me how much they cost, but I think they were under five euros and you get five tubes of 7.5 millilitres. And again, curiosity got the better of me. The Canson XL sketchbook was £12.60. It's A5 and there are 68 pages. It's 300 GSM. Oh, I'm going to have some fun with that. I'm just going to play about in that sketchbook. I might share it, I might not. Who knows? But I, 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 I do like a bit of Canson paper though and that kind of attracted me to it. And I really did want to get something from the art shop. Where I live, there are no dedicated art shops close to me. And they've vanished over the years. And I hate that fact. There used to be two really good ones in the two towns near to me. And there's nothing like that anymore. And it just kind of doesn't give me a reason to go into town anymore either and it's really sad so if you have a local art shop or if you're out and about visiting places please support them they're, they're businesses and they know what they're talking about with art supplies and it's just nice to have a tactile approach to trying new materials I kind of think. As for the grabby items I can't find my invoice anywhere. I've checked my emails and my paper. I must have just cleared a load of emails out recently. I think my order came to in total about 50 to about 50 pounds, which is kind of what I'd expect for getting a load of brushes and papers. So it was a little bit on the expensive side. It arrived within a week and it was just nice to give these a try. So I guess I've gone over what I've bought there as much as I could. I'll talk about what's going on with this picture. So yeah, I don't use watercolour pencils all that often. Personally, I prefer to just use watercolours. However, I've always put that down to the surfaces I work on. I tend to find watercolour paper, and especially because I like to use a good thick watercolour paper, it tends to be a little bit soft for a pencil going over it. And it's not so much about the pencil dissolving, it's more about the impression that the lead actually physically leaves on the paper and it just leaves all sorts of funky textures. This watercolour pencil paper is 200 GSM and it's a fine grain and it's 19 by 19 centimetres and high water absorbing quality thick and heavyweight is what it claims to be now i'll be honest it did buckle and not terribly but again the watercolor paper does unless you actually stretch it out properly it's going to happen i wouldn't say i drenched the paper but in areas where there's some deep colors there i definitely had to really add some water to get things moving I also didn't tape the paper down either. I don't know why I didn't. I'm, I'm kind of enjoying having thick borders on pictures at the moment, so I guess I'm just carrying on with that. But as far as dissolving the coloured pencils on there, I, it, it just seemed like any other. And I was like, okay, I'm okay with that. The next thing I wanted to take into consideration was layering things up. And again, it might just be down to the fact I don't use them very often, but I actually did quite find it a good experience. I found that the coloured pencils, well the watercolour pencils, still clung on to the very fine grain there and when it came to dissolving them with the water it wasn't really a problem. It was quite nice to pick in and add a few sharper details and I felt I could do that. I didn't feel like it was wearing the pencil down too much and I didn't feel like the paper was going to tear or anything so I guess yeah, I suppose I've got some nice watercolour pencil paper. Although, to be honest, overall, it's not all that different to regular watercolour paper. So, you know, it's up to you if you want to give it a try. But if you're after anything special, it's not that different from a regular watercolour paper. So carry on using your favourite. Not that I particularly wanted to test this out, but some areas needed some highlights because again, this is just not a great medium for me and a Posca pen did a nice job finishing things off. So I thought this would be a nice opportunity to get out the Derwent Graffitint pencils and I have featured them on this channel before and to be honest, I haven't used them for ages. For me, although the principle is pretty much the same as a watercolour pencil, I do tend to find they dissolve a bit better and obviously you've, you've got those grains of graphite. 
I also wanted to give a try the Karen Dash and the Rembrandt watercolour crayons because they are just divine to work with and again I don't feel like I use them often enough so to be able to try them out on this paper might just reignite things for me. I feel like the paper represented the colours nice and vibrantly on the swatches so it was time to get a picture started. For this one I'm just using the watercolour crayons and I start off again like you saw before just adding in very very light layers and blocking out areas. I did this again just to see how things would layer up and just to see how the material would behave and I guess I'm kind of reacquainting myself with it. I had forgotten completely just what a ridiculous colour payout these crayons have. And to be honest, maybe in the future I might use them just as watercolours alone because they activate so quickly and I was using a relatively soft brush here. I did switch between the ones I'd got from Grabby as well as just ones I'd got nearby like the Artful ones and my good old trusty Rigger brush. But yeah, that colour payout, I keep forgetting how quickly and how vibrantly they activate. Once that layer had dried I had noticed there was quite a lot of texture there and I don't know if that's the paper to blame or the amount of water I applied to it or the crayons or again just not being that familiar with them because it has been a while. I do recall though looking back at the swatch sheets and I guess I find this in general anything with a blue pigment in it at least when I use it tends to have that cockling effect however I didn't mind it too much it added a little bit of atmosphere and a little bit of texture and when it came to going over it with the crayon it did obscure quite a lot of that however I still added some more water to it but as you can see it maintains a pretty good consistent texture very similar to before I applied the water the first time around so that is good to know if you're wanting to work on top of your watercolour pictures and not reactivate it you've still got that coloured pencil effect going on there and I think you'd be fine blending it but again though if your favourite paper does that anyway then don't worry about it on the second layer though I do feel like it was a little bit more forgiving but yeah it was still quite streaky but I just didn't want my paper to buckle too much so I thought we're just gonna have to leave it at that. I was really happy though with the orange I applied for the fox I just think it really worked out quite nicely and as you can see I like to blend the colours in a dry way first and then smush them all together with the brush afterwards. I just feel personally I've got a little bit more control there. However I'm looking at the background and I'm thinking maybe I might need to change my approach but hey ho again I don't use these very often but you know what I, I kind of just wanted to as well which is probably what inspired the purchase in the first place. I guess I'll talk about the brushes I got from Grabby since I do use them on here. They're okay, the ones that I thought would be like the artful ones were kind of there. One or two hairs came out but I guess that kind of happens sometimes. I would say they are not quite as snappy as the artful ones but they hold a, the same amount of water and they're, they're okay to deal detail with so I'm okay with that. The moppy brushes I only used one of them but it did what I expected it to and that's what I wanted it to do as well. It held a good amount of water and I'm sure with some practice I'll get a better more more consistent background but hey ho I'm just playing about here and just sharing my experiences. For adding details I just went and removed the wettened pigment straight off the black Caran d'Ache crayon and that worked a treat for adding those details in there and don't worry if you think I've whizzed through these pretty quickly I will be showcasing them at the end of the video so you can get a proper look of them. Now it is time for the Derwent Graffitint and I mean I do have a few different brands of general watercolour pencils and I suppose I could have spent a whole video doing loads of them but I didn't want to keep it going on too long but I do have ink tents and I still have those little and those ones that I got from Aldi knocking about so I might revisit those in the future and see if my experience using those changes but I thought I wanted to try a medium that would be like a watercolour pencil but different and 
I must admit these worked really nicely on here and again it might just be down to my experience or lack of but I quite liked the textures that were achieved on here. For me, the Graffitint, I love them so much and I think I might have to get the pans out at some point and just have a good play about. And I do actually really enjoy water-soluble graphite in general. I think it's such a beautiful medium. I love the fact that because these are muted colours that all of those imperfections in the background actually just add a little bit of life to it. I think sometimes if you use muted colours you can be in danger of perhaps not I don't know, perhaps not having a vibrancy there and I tend to think if you've got a bit of texture that makes up for things. These applied beautifully on here though and again I guess it's like when I've used, I'm sure I used botanical watercolour paper when I last featured these on my channel and they worked just the same to be honest it just feels a slightly thinner paper which again if you want to use those colored pencil like details over the top i think at least in my opinion that would be better when i use colored pencils in general i like my paper to be just a little bit thinner and have a hard rigid surface underneath just so it it makes the lead apply to the surface a lot better. I, th I think that might just be a me thing, but that's what I've noticed and that's a preferred technique and approach to it that I like to adopt. Anyway, I am waffling on, but when it came to activating all of the layers, especially in the hair, again, we did have some texture there, but I can forgive it because it's graphitant and it is just beautiful. And it's such a contrast, really, once you apply that water and get those pigments moving, just how much it brings those colours to life. One of the things I notice about graphitint in general, and I feel like this video has been more about the mediums I already have rather than the ones I picked up, but one of the things I notice though is I can't get very, very dark tones with it. That graphite just halts it to a point where it doesn't really go much darker. You, you reach a point and that's it. So I did have to have a little bit of help from that black Caran d'Ache crayon just to add some of the details and again I just applied it straight with a brush off the crayon and it did a nice job. It just refined everything a little bit. For the feathers in the character's hair, I took a slightly different approach. I did add a little bit more pressure when I was adding those colours and I just kept it to a very simple wash because I didn't want to lose those details that I'd put down there. But you'll see that in a second. I really do feel like I've waffled on quite a lot in this video though, but I do hope you've enjoyed it and if you are enjoying these slightly longer format videos or if you have any suggestions to improve these slightly longer formatted ones, please let me know down below. I tend to find that I like to talk about the process and then end up mixing in a bunch of other subjects at the same time, so it's kind of just how I roll with things really. <laughs> The next video I'm going to pop up is using the Shinhan Pass watercolour gouache paints and I really can't wait to show you because I really, really enjoyed using them but you will just have to wait and see because I've still got to edit it. Anyway, you lovely lot, here's a quick run through of the pictures and I've got mixed feelings about how they all turned out. I love the vibrancy of the fox one. I like the fact I had a different approach to the lily pad one and I was just happy I got to use the graphitint and I feel like I need to reacquaint myself a little bit more there. But of course, let me know down below what you guys think. I do hope you've enjoyed watching this little modest art haul and using some of the supplies afterwards. As usual, I think there's some things on screen that I think you're going to enjoy. But as always, thank you for watching and I'll see you lovely lot soon. Bye!